Hello, Studio Art. Uh, this is a quick tutorial on our sketchbook assignment, which is uh, the watercolor experiment. Uh, so what we're going to do for this <clears throat> assignment is to uh, practice using watercolor in your sketchbook. So before attempting to paint your candy wrapper still life painting, uh, it's best to practice with the material because watercolor can be unforgiving and it works different than other paints that we've used in the past. So the first thing that you want to do is to divide your sketchbook into eight sections. So take a ruler or you can just free draw um, into here and just make kind of like little little blocks in the space. So I'm going to do this. I like big areas to work in. And you can divide this however you want. I know you guys all have different um, mural watercolors. So you're going to need some um, supplies. Uh, you'll need a container of clean water. Uh, you're going to need your watercolor palette and also a paper towel is handy and uh, a variety of, of brushes um, if you'd like. You can use the brush that I gave you guys uh, inside, but I think that your brushes that you, that I gave you at the beginning of the, of the year, uh, you'll be able to get some, some different results with them. So uh, to activate watercolor, the first thing that you want to do is take your brush and dip it in a little bit of water. And then uh, don't wipe it off with a paper towel, but you're going to go straight into the color that you're going to use and just kind of massage the brush onto the color. And you'll see that the color will start to come, come out. Uh, and you can just go right onto your paper and start brushing. Uh, what I'd like you guys to do with the watercolor paint is to practice making thin, thick lines. If I push my, my paintbrush down, right, that's going to make a thick line. Some more. Um, to make some thin lines, uh, if you are watching, just hold your paintbrush straight up in the air and move it across. That makes thin lines. Um, you can kind of practice lifting and pulling up and down to make some different kind of, of lines with that. Um, the next thing that you can do also with watercolors is you can actually mix them. So you're going to find with our next assignment where you're going to be painting candy wrappers that not every single color here is going to match what you see on your candy wrapper. So you're going to have to mix some paints. And that's where the top lid of your watercolor palette comes in handy. So what we're going to do here is just pick up paint. So for example, maybe I wanted a, a lighter um, green. So I'm going to and I'm going to put it up here. If this area is dirty, just take a damp paper towel and you can wipe this off really clean. Okay. Right there. That works great. Variety my sketch first. So I'll take some blue. And I know that if I take some blue and I mix it, let's see what I'm just going to rinse my brush off. And notice too, I'm not drying my brush off in between colors. Um, you know, in order for watercolor to work, you got to activate it with water. So drying your brush off. Find you're not going to be able to activate it. Now, I have purple on my brush. I'm not going to go back into red, but if I need more red, say I want to do a red violet, I'll just clean it off, swish it in the water. Ooh. So now I have my new color that I created, uh, and maybe I'll practice uh, in my next square, kind of dabbing it on the paper to see what kind of effects that I'll get. If you want your colors to be darker, what you're going to do is I'm just going to wipe off some extra water. You're going to add more pigment. So you shouldn't have pools of water in your watercolor palette or on the, the actual watercolor cakes. We call these little um, circles or squares. You might have squares in your watercolor palette. We call them cakes. So the water shouldn't be pooling on there. So you shouldn't be using excessive amounts of water. Um, but if you do find that you have a lot of water on there, that you go ahead and dry off your brush and go in and kind of pick it up, right? And that will make more of an opaque or more of a um, darker color. It'll be less easy, less, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It won't be as easy to, to see through it. Okay, that's what the pigment is, right? And here I have like a more opaque color. Now, the more water that I add to this new color, the thinner it's going to get and the more transparent it's going to get. 
It's a little more see-through. And this is a great way to create washes. I'll explain that in our next video when we start doing our um, candy wrapper still life paintings. So next thing, uh, if you have these items at home, I just want to um, show you some really cool things that you can do, you can do with watercolor. One thing is using uh, tape and you can just use like regular scotch tape, regular house tape. Uh, a tip is to stick it to your clothing and that gets some fibers up off of it. And then you can put those down. And this is great for if you want to block out white areas. So you'll notice in our colored palette, there is no white there. And the reason why is because watercolor artists use the white of the paper uh, to get white. And if they want to make a tint, say of a color, uh, you know, instead of adding white to it, they thin it out just like I showed you with some more water and that allows the white of the paper to shine through. So if you want to play around with um, some tape, you, know, you can do that to block out uh, areas. If you don't have tape at home, that's okay. Another thing that works really great is crayons. Crayons will also resist paper. And if you have a white crayon, um, that one works, works the best. So I'm gonna go in and maybe add some, some orange. I'm gonna go right over the top here. Now, if your watercolors start looking muddy, it may be because you need to clean your water. So you'll notice my water is getting dirtier and dirtier the more that I clean the brush. So from time to time, make sure that you are cleaning off your, your brush there. Uh, another thing you can experiment with too, is that when you have a wet color, um, or a color that's already damp that you put on the page, and you go on with another color, you know, next to it or on top of it, that also creates a different effect. Um, also, watercolor pigment will go wherever the water is. So if I just take some clean water and I put that on the page, uh, I can go in and just tap it with, um, and what you'll see is the color will start to bleed into those, those wet areas. Sometimes you have to kind of push it around. So that's, that's fun. Surface. I'm going to go down here. I let the whole surface of my paper or my square and I go in with more color. For example, blue. Right, I can get some really cool ombre effects. So I put, I just dip my brush in once and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep going over the wet area that I painted and then you can get some really cool um, ombre effects going on there in that one. Um, another really interesting one is uh, if you do something similar to this and you paint an area and you sprinkle salt over the top of it, it makes this really interesting effect. I'm just trying to think of all the different um, techniques. Uh, dry, a dry technique, which kind of is really good for if you have texture or you want a little bit more control, to, you know, with a damp brush, not, not wet, um, go into a color, any color you want, and this is called um, dry brush, and that creates, see how it's kind of rippled or, you know, there's some absence in the, the paint as a painting. That's because um, the paint is, is not wet and it's not going to move around as much, so it's stuck to your, your paint brush and get some really interesting textures that way too. So um, with the last two, I want you guys to experiment, play around with using uh, the pigments. You should have eight squares with eight different types of uh, ways that you experimented with, with watercolor. I just want to show you before I leave you, if you pick up, I'm going to pick up the tape a little bit. And see that blocked out the white area there. Um, so have fun with this. Uh, it's your choice how you want to um, play around with with the colors maybe even play around good luck and if you have any questions feel free to give me a call here at school uh or re-watch the video thank you